What is up my dashing dudes and darling dames? I am the Hans TV, and welcome back to the only subreddit that makes you laugh so hard out of pure stupidity that it gives you an aneurysm. It's r slash stories about Kevin. Our first post for today comes from Soggy414. I think I know how chicken breast works, you idiot. A bit of context for you. Kavina is unfortunately my roommate, and she is a raging narcissist. So she believes that her word and presence are above all. We used to be really good friends, but she's incredibly insecure. And so she dismisses everything I say by saying, Ugh, you're such a fool or you're an idiot. It's incredibly hard to have a conversation with her because the entire convo is either her calling me an idiot or her bragging about herself. I'd like to think of myself as somewhat knowledgeable person. And one of the things I am surprisingly very knowledgeable about is the meat industry how to cook meat, what meat to use, etc. as a result of my job in a butcher shop for the past four years. So, this story begins about three weeks ago. We took a trip to Trader Joe's together and while she was there, she ended up buying this pesto marinated chicken breast or something. I can't recall exactly what it was. Kavina has a bit of a problem with buying food and forgetting about it and letting it sit in the fridge for weeks on end. This is a bit of a point of contention between us because she believes that food never goes bad and will let food sit in the fridge for weeks or bags of chips are left open to go stale, etc. I am the one to throw away food when I no longer want it or believe that it has been sitting in the fridge for too long. She finds this utterly ridiculous and calls me an idiotic picky eater. Kavina will literally eat anything, even if it fell into a toilet bowl. The reason I mentioned this is because I knew that she would probably forget about the chicken breast in the fridge. As a rule of thumb, chicken usually goes bad after about five days in the fridge. That is why after five days, you should freeze or cook the breast. I knew that Kavina doesn't give a flying frick about what she puts into her body. So I decided just to say something to her, knowing that if she let the chicken breast spoil, it could be detrimental to her health. I told her that she should put the chicken breast into the freezer because she had other food she needs to eat first and probably wouldn't get to the chicken until next week. She got super mad at me and tried to tell me to not be so controlling and said to me, I think I knew how chicken breast works, you idiot. So fine, I let her be. She found the chicken breast at the bottom of the fridge three weeks later, as I knew she would. She decided to cook it right away too, as I knew she would. I was working on some homework at the time and she came into my room asking for some instruction on how to cook the breast. I asked her if I could see how thick it was first. So we walked to the kitchen together. One of my other roommates was in the kitchen at the same time too. Now, what happens next could be very triggering to some people. So stop reading if you are easily disgusted. Kavina takes the chicken breast out of the marinated bag. Her fingers were covered in the pesto marinade and the raw chicken juice. We were discussing how long to put it in the oven when she turns around to the garbage bin to throw the marinade bag out. She lifts the lid, drops the bag in, and proceeds to lick each of her fingers off. My other roommate and I looked at Kavina with pure disgust. I've always found her to be kind of a gross and slobby person, but I never expected that. I was absolutely speechless when Kavina came to realize what she just did. Her face turned beet red and she started screaming at me yelling about how it was an honest mistake and how I shouldn't embarrass her for an honest mistake. At my work in the butcher shop, I've seen men accidentally splash chicken juice in their faces slash mouths, and then they were calling in sick the next day from an E. coli infection. I told her this and she got mad. This was a couple of days ago and she has barely even talked to me or my other roommates since. I just find this incredibly entertaining since she assumes that I am the idiot and claim to understand how chicken breast works yet licked her fingers of raw chicken juice. Not only did she lick her fingers of raw chicken juice, she licked her fingers of raw three week old chicken juice. Last time I checked, chicken doesn't stay good that long. And I'm pretty sure there was probably mold in there, which I guess the pesto might've covered up because it is like that same green color. But at the same time, it should be common sense to know that you can't just leave something in the fridge for three weeks. You can't even leave like, take out in there for more than a couple of days before it starts to go bad. This girl must have been pampered her entire life to where she never had to do anything for herself and her parents always did it for her or something, which is why she's such an idiot. But thank you for the story. 
Our next post comes from Lunar Flare Minty. Part Kevin, part Karen, no part Angel. Notice me, r slash. Well, I'm not r slash, but I hope I'm up to par. So this is a story many of my DA fans know as it resulted in me developing post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. At this time, my only diagnosis was Asperger's syndrome, an autism spectrum disorder and OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. I still have both. Hey, I'm right there with you. I got both of those too. Some backstory. This happened at a special needs school where kids with special needs should be privileged with safety and security. And in ninth grade, I met the first bully, a guy who was not a Kevin and not a Karen either. He was just a guy who loved making others feel awful by cussing, spitting, and insulting. Golly, what a jerk. The real story begins before 10th grade began. This Kevin, whose name was actually Kevin, no joke, was actually nice in the beginning, at a party my friends had. And then 10th grade began and he was in my class this year. That's when we saw his true colors. He started by babbling about baptizing his friend's future pet rabbit. Now. You should never put a rabbit in water, as they can thrash about and hurt themselves in the process. Water to them is scary, even holy water. Eventually he got mad because his friend decided on a turtle instead, and you can't baptize a turtle. So after that he started targeting me as a victim of religious bullying, mainly because I liked anime, magic and Final Fantasy, and I still do. I would openly talk about the stories I would write, and he started telling me I would end up in hell because I was a demon who God hated. Now, as you might not know, I'm a devoted Christian, and I believe that God doesn't hate anyone, even Satan himself. I might like anime and magic, but I also love my Lord, and he would never hate a person for their interests. And yet the Karen of a Kevin would constantly berate me for loving Satan. I went to the teacher for help. But instead of asking Kevin to respect me, she asked me to stop causing it by talking about my stories. Holy freaking spit. Why was it my fault? But even then it didn't stop. The teachers fixed to our rivalry? Put us next to each other and have us learn to get along. That was after multiple letters to the school asking for Kevin to be moved far away from me. Thankfully, my mom pulled me out of the school that same day. However, the damage was done and I constantly had nightmares and daymares about Kevin's combination of stupidity and disrespect. It took up until last year to find the right help, and only then was PTSD an official diagnosis. I got help, and even learned that Kevin himself had been kicked out of my old school, and then committed his own sin by marrying another man. But it's not my role to judge. We can do what we want to do, and I can just hope he learned his lesson. At least he's probably happy now. Again, I hope. As for me, I finally recovered from PTSD and now have a bright future in animation and game design. I have a boyfriend who loves me and he supported me while I was at the PTSD anonymous meetings or whatever they were called. We did 12 sets, so I guess it was something anonymous. My YouTube channel is growing and I plan to make it my career someday. And most of all, although I still wish I had been respected for my interest back then, I forgive Kevin. He was a troubled young man, if anything. But I still want to sue the school for making me look like the problem. That just wasn't fair. If there is one thing that I hate about public school, it's that they treat the person being bullied as if they're the ones that's causing it. Not the bully who's doing the actual bullying. They treat the people who are being bullied as if they are the reason that that person is bullying them. It's like, no. And then whenever you finally stand up for yourself, whenever you finally get the courage to say, stop it, you're the one that gets in trouble and they don't. I've never understood that. Also, I am so glad for you to have finally gotten over your PTSD and I'm glad that you're uh, acclimating to your life very well. With having Asperger's OCD and then PTSD piled on top of that, I, I know it wasn't easy for you. So I'm really glad that you're better and I'm glad that you were able to forgive him for what he did. Our next post for today comes from Tales from Tech Support. Username, not the actual subreddit. Business travel with a Keviana. Like most, I've been grounded since Corona. So this story is from pre-Corona. As per my previous story, I work at a company that does hardware, security testing, and I have to fly all around the world for our customers. 
We also have a program at our company to take in and help young people that are down on their lunk and are bright enough, but have never gotten a chance of getting a proper education due to a lot of different circumstances. After the previous Kavina, the interview and placement process was updated, but Kavina Squared managed to slip through. Let's call her Keviana. We had four new recruits in this program. One of them was a girl named Keviana. She wasn't the next superstar of the company, but decent enough to do basic prep work for us in the lab. Some of my requests for work to be done had been given to her, and it seemed to be up to standards. I had planned a blitz series of client visits, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and Korea. For the coming two and a half weeks, I would take a three week vacation in Japan afterwards to visit friends there. My boss called me with a request to take her with me on the trip as part of his efforts to show these kids the world in hopes of motivating to do even better. I had a lot of backlog with clients that I needed to catch up with. Most of my work is back to back with tight schedules, especially when clients keep changing deadlines and changing specs. Being alone or with someone that is the same as you on trips like these just makes everything so much easier. Quite a lot of discussion ensued between me and my boss, but in the end, I still had to take her with me on the travels. I was already in Thailand on another engagement, and instead of flying back home for two days, I just stayed put, finished up my work, and took a day off. Keviana would fly out herself to Thailand, and we would meet up at the hotel. She told me she would arrive Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning came and went, and she did not show up. It wasn't until the evening she came over to the hotel. Turned out, she did not know that time zones existed and just did a simple calculation of local time plus fly time equals Tuesday morning. She also learned about jet lag the next morning. It was going to be a long four weeks with her. Thailand. The morning after she had checked into the hotel in Thailand, we were to meet for breakfast and would go to the client after. I showed up already in business attire. She showed up like an Instagram influencer going to the beach. Turned out her entire suitcase was full of dresses and leisure clothes. She was just here to support me, right? When I was working, she could go out, right? I ended up having to buy her proper clothes at the spot. Last day in our Thailand visit, we went out for dinner with some people from the client. I still had a lot of work to do, so I foolishly left Keviana with them and returned back to the hotel that was just a few minutes away. I told her not to stay too long as we had to go out early to catch our flight to Malaysia. When I went to her room at 8 in the morning to see if we could have breakfast and leave, she did not respond. I ended up with hotel staff having to open her door to wake her as the phone went unanswered multiple times. Turned out, she had come back drunk in the middle of the night with a random Thai guy she met in the bar and ordered around 250 euro in room service during the night. Thailand is cheap, but room service is expensive everywhere, especially when alcohol is involved. Company is paying, right? Malaysia. After her one night stand with room service in Thailand, she spent the next day traveling with me to Malaysia with a hangover. We barely made our flight. Roads in Thailand and Malaysia are not always as smooth as they should be, so she was rather beat up afterwards. I left her in the hotel for the first day of the two days of meetings and deep dives. I ended up finding her at the end of the day at the hotel swimming pool living the influencer life. Second day I took her with me. During a meeting slash presentation, she was in the back. Obviously bored because it was about very niche advanced topics specific to their hardware. She ended up starting to paint her nails. Remind you. This is a new client, and regardless of how chill they might be, painting your nails during meetings isn't something I ever want to have a discussion about with a client. It took well over five minutes before she understood my hint, as I think she was going to take her shoes off to do her toenails. My client luckily never noticed. At least I think. Singapore. We had a two day weekend in Singapore before another two day workshop with a client. It was a planned recharge, and I luckily did not need to prepare anything for this workshop. I've been to Singapore often and always have a few stores and restaurants I frequent. I'm a woman, and I like looking good, having nice things, the techie in me, and eat delicious food. Over the day, Keviana noticed I had spent quite a lot of money, 3000 SGG. But this was all planned and budgeted for. Over dinner, she point blank asked me if I was an escort on the side, because only her friends that escorted had that kind of money. It wasn't until I told her how much I make a month that her demeanor changed. Learning how much I made in a month, she felt like she could do it too, completely ignoring the hard work I've put in to be where I am now. On Sunday, she came to my hotel room and wanted my help to start studying. I knew for sure she would give up within a few days. 
but I'm a nice person and gave her some simple documents to read and come back to me when she had read them to discuss them. She came back a few hours later, complaining that I'm giving her the basics only. How was she supposed to make my level of money without her explaining to me the Vance stuff? Now, I'm a fundamentalist in the sense that I want someone to have a solid understanding of the fundamentals first before moving over to the complex and advanced topics, especially for someone that barely understands the field. I explained this to her. She went off on a rant, how I am keeping her from being successful, and how as a woman, we should support each other. I just wanted to enjoy my Sunday catching up on a book that I was reading and catching up at my private life. Instead, Miss Kiviana was here demanding I'd be a private tutor to explain to her topics she would not understand without any fundamentals. I told her I would not do so until she understand the basics. She left angry. I took her to the workshop the next day and was thinking she had given up and would spend the rest of the day being bored. Instead, she felt she mastered the basics in an afternoon and proceeded to asking questions in the I already know this, that means X happens, right? Variety. After about one hour from the start, she had asked enough stupid questions to disrupt the workshop enough that I was getting questioning looks from the other participants and called a quick break in order to talk with her. She maintained nothing wrong with her desire to learn. I told her that they were paying good money for my time and should not be bothered by her. She started the argument again about how I sabotaged her and I ended up sending her back to the hotel. In a bold and idiotic move, she ended up calling my boss to complain in an incoherent story. Given the time difference of seven hours between Amsterdam and Singapore, she again forgot about the time zones, she ended up calling him at around four in the morning. Even he was pissed. She was still angry by the time we left, despite having done nothing but lounge around the hotel for a day and a half. We left for Korea the next morning. Only three more days and I would be taking my long overdue vacation and be Kavina free. Korea. At the first night being in Korea, she came by my room to ask if she could use my notebook, cause hers broke. Asking her about how it broke, she told me she was watching videos on her notebook in the bath and it fell in. She was surprised that it was broken cause her phone fell in as well and was still working. I was surprised she even thought for a second I would give her my notebook. I am completely useless without a notebook to work with. I will protect it at all costs. The kicker was that I actually had use for her during this time around in preparing a lot of files for the participants. But at this stage, I can't get a new company notebook overnighted. So she ended up being useless for the rest of the trip. And I spent another hour during the night prepping the files myself. She spent another three days lounging in the hotel and area because, sarcastically, she would only get in the way of my workshops. At this point, I was already done with her and let her do whatever she wanted. After the work in Korea was done, I was scheduled to go to Japan for my holiday, and she was to fly directly back to Amsterdam. I had already told her this back in Thailand, but she was thinking she would be going with me despite me telling her she would be flying back on her own. Our flights lined up within a two hour windows, so we went together. But when she found out at the airport, she was livid about it. I was cheating her out of a holiday in Japan. She clearly did not understand. I was paying for this myself and was under no obligation to take her with me. Nearby airport security checked in on us because of all the commotion she was causing, and rightfully was a bit pissed about the commotion about nothing and sent us away to our different check-ins. Thank you Korean airport police. About a week into my holiday in Japan, I got a call from my boss asking what happened on the trip and where the room service charges came from, because Kevyana was at the office telling everyone how horrible a person I was. I spent an hour on the phone with him telling the entire story. I was annoyed again just by talking about it, that I ended up that night drinking till morning with friends and a group of rowdy businessmen. Sorry boss, but for putting me through another Kavina, this night's drinking will be billed as an expense to the company. Keviana's behavior in the weeks after she had returned was bad enough for her to be let go. What kind of person ever thinks that whenever you get set on a trip by your boss, especially whenever you know what you do, for your job, who would think that that's a, an excuse to just go on vacation there? Like she knew she was there to be learning and to be working and to help you out, but she would rather sit around on her butt, go to the pool, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think she's more entitled than stupid, but she's obviously stupid because she thought that she could just interrupt your meetings, especially with new clients. That's messed up. Well, all right, my dashing dudes and darling dames, 
That is going to do it for today's episode of r slash stories about Kevin. I hope you liked the stories and if you did, I'm going to link them in the description as always. And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, drop a like and a comment down below with what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who's continuing to subscribe to my channel and who is continuing to watch my videos. I cannot thank y'all enough for what y'all have been doing in this time that I've had to take an absence. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.